I've had quite a few requests to just make a video on the different types of price discrimination. We get perfect first degree price discrimination, second degree and third degree. So I'm going to just recap these very quickly for your exam. Perfect price discrimination is where you look at your demand curve and basically what's happening is your producer is going to charge each and every single consumer their maximum willingness to pay or their reservation price. So according to the various points along your demand curve. So you'll have no consumer surplus. They charged a price, their maximum willingness to pay. So the difference between what they're willing to pay and what they actually pay is zero. So there'll be no consumer surplus. And we'll also find that there's no dead weight loss because they end up producing up to the same point as under perfect competition. This is your perfectly competitive equilibrium where your demand equals marginal cost or supply. So they'll produce up to the same point. But this entire area, if you were to compare this with perfect competition, all of this would actually be consumer surplus. But this entire area under perfect or first degree price discrimination becomes producer surplus. The difference between the price people are willing to pay, say for that first unit would be up there and then the marginal cost of producing it becomes producer surplus on that unit and you add it across all units. So that's producer surplus. So no consumer surplus left, no dead weight loss, same output as under perfect competition. Um, but remember, a key difference with perfect competition is that there's no consumer surplus where there's, there would have been um, under a, a perfect competition. There's also the fact that the, only the last consumer is going to pay a price equal to marginal cost on this last unit. Um, but you do not have price equal to marginal cost or allocative efficiency across all units, as is the case with perfect competition. Second degree um, or nonlinear price discrimination is where you charge different prices according to how much. Um, which block uh, you're in. So if you consume between 0 and 10 units, you're going to pay a price of 600. Between 10 and 20 units, say 500 um, rand is what you're going to pay. And if you consume between 20 and 30 units, you're going to pay a price of 400. So this is distinguishing between a greater number of consumers um, and charging a, a, um, different prices. And it's going to be the case if you just have a sim simple or single price monopolist but you're not identifying each and every individual, as is the case over here with perfect price discrimination. So you'll still have some consumer surplus left. It won't be that much, but within, say, this first group, you're going to find that somebody was, say, willing to pay 650 Rand for the commodity and they only pay 600. So there is some consumer surplus remaining. Um, within that second group, you're going to find a bit, etc. So these areas, form consumer surplus. Producer surplus is going to be the difference between the price that's actually charged, 600 say for this first group, and the marginal cost. So it's going to be this whole area here. Likewise for the second group and the third. So these areas become producer surplus. And then finally, we have a dead weight loss, and your dead weight loss is going to be equal to this spotted triangle here. The dead weight loss is likely to be less than that occurring under a simple or single price monopolist because you've been able to break the market into to various groups, and, you, and in that way you increase output, and there's a lower dead weight loss than under a single um, price monopolist. But obviously, there is a dead weight loss, which makes it less efficient than under perfect competition and even under perfect price discrimination, where there was no dead weight loss. Finally, with third degree price discrimination, you are breaking the market just into two groups and you basically profit maximize in each of those segments of the market. So you, you, you break the market up, find your demand and corresponding marginal revenue for each of those groups. And you use your amnesia rule, what I always say, the profit maximization rule, where um, MR is equal to MC. And profit maximize, find the, the profit maximizing price and quantity as a result. And as we expect, we, we see that the price is higher 
to the group with a more price and elastic demand, as opposed to the group with a more price elastic demand or who's more sensitive to the price. So this, for instance, might be students versus the rest of the consumers, um, and you may be talking about discounts to movies, etc. So that is third degree price discrimination. Again, in, if you wanted to compare this in terms of welfare to say a single price monopolist, um, you would have to consider the particular um, the, the, uh, uh, the particular circumstances here because the dead weight loss might be more or less depending on how much is actually produced in total. So I hope that helps you.